Hello, Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host, and welcome back to another episode with Mitchell Levy, a credibility expert. In the last episode, we discussed three ways we can become credible internally. Today, we'll define credibility and discuss things that build and hurt our credibility. In today's episode, we will cover the following key takeaways. Number one, credibility is the quality in which we are known, liked, and trusted. Number two, to build our credibility, we should focus on providing value to our customers. Number three, in order to provide value, we should have a common language and focus on finding the right customers. Number four, sharing our thoughts and ideas with our customers and having respect can build our credibility. And number five, the small actions we take that hurt our credibility can do a lot of damage when they're added together over time. So we talked about before how we need to be credible. Now we're going to a different topic and, and this is the topic of value. So how is it that providing value to our customers, to our audience, to our industry, how does that value establish credibility? I think there's a a credibility spiral. And I think as we provide value and exceed whatever they paid for that value, right? Whatever they invested, if we give them more than that, our credibility increases. So I think the value we provide is the, is the proof. It's the, the currency to establish that credibility. It's a really, it, you got me thinking about uh, two by two that I created. So first we have to make sure we understand what the word value means, right? So it could be as, as a thought leader, as a service provider, I'm providing value and it's possible that the person on the other end is not receiving that value because they're at a different stage of their evolution. So value is a relative term. It's not the value that I send or give. It's the value that's received. That's exactly where it is. And so what has to happen, uh, one of the two by twos that came out of the, the research and, and the practice that we've been doing is that combination of being a servant leader. So providing service and at the same time, communicating and living your purpose, right? So what we often want to do is we want to be in the upper right-hand quadrant. We want to be someone, and this is uh, happy to send you the two by two, and we could potentially put that into your book. Um, We want to be somebody who delivers value and we want to also be living and delivering our purpose. So that's what I said before You don't just deliver value. You're not just a servant leader, but you're servant leader doing what you love doing. And I could at some other time, we or maybe offline, we'll we'll talk about the other four quadrants, but it's a very fascinating area to think about the world based on whether you're a servant leader or not, and whether or not you're communicating and living your purpose. But I don't know if I answer your question. So why your question was why is it important to deliver value? In in relation to credibility, right? Why how does providing value help to establish our credibility? Well, it's, it's, it, it's really simple. You, the first thing you need to do if you want to be credible is you need to be able to articulate who you are and how you serve people in, in, in your CPOP in 10 words or less. So if, if the answer is for me, uh, businesses that feel invisible, the next thing people are going to ask me is, well, tell me more. What do I do? And then I could actually tell them what do I do in the next minute in terms of how I help people become not invisible, right? And oftentimes what may happen, so providing value is is two things um, or three things maybe. Well, first is, is education mindset, having a common language, right? So providing value is first making sure people have, are speaking the same language, right? So oftentimes when you, when you said something, I said, well, let's, let's, let me give you the definition of that word. So I then can answer on top of it. This is something because we use words interchangeably to mean different things, it's important to, to make sure you have a common language, right? And then, so once you have a common language, then the question becomes, so a lot of times people say, Mitchell, I'm invisible because I only have 1,000 followers or 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. And and so my first question is, well, are A, are they the right followers? Uh, B, why do you want more? And when you start diving into those details, Value could be, oh, wait a second. I don't need the followers I have. They're no longer relevant because that's an old business. The followers that I need to follow me today are 
somewhere else. And this is what I'm going to deliver value to them. This is now my new CPOP of what I'm going to de deliver to that value so that I get good word of mouth marketing and more people will talk about me. So by delivering good value to the audience that needs to receive it and benefits from it, what ultimately happens is they talk about you. You get endorsements and can do endorsement marketing. You get word of mouth marketing and they will, they will then recommend you to others. A little bit earlier, you talked about wanting to change the definition of credibility in the dictionary. And you said it was a third accurate. Can you go back and tell us what is the current definition of credibility in the dictionary? And then what do you think it should be? The definition today is focused primarily on trust. It says the quality in which you are trustworthy. And the way I see it is we used to, when there were gatekeepers in the world, we used to listen to music that came to us by broadcast, by, by the, the recording studios that actually were able to figure out what musicians we were going to listen to. The actors we were able to see came from the broadcast media. And the books we were able to read came from the publishers. Okay. And, and so what they used to say is, and we'll take a publishing example, here's the author of this book. They're credible, which, and so what they really meant was uh, you should trust them to provide the solutions you need, buy more books. So we as a publisher can make more money. Okay. So the definition, when, when there are no gatekeepers and everyone has a camera and microphone, we have access to the world. The definition of credibility needs to be incorporating two other components. I do agree that trust is first. So I know we know the term no like, and trust, but how it really works is we need to trust somebody first before we want to get to know them. It's not that I know of them. It's I need to know them. I need to know their servant leadership. I need to know their intent and commitment to do the right thing. I need to actually know their internal integrity. And once I get to trust somebody, and then I get to know them a little bit more, I could decide if I like them. And so know, like, and trust, the quality in which you're known, liked, and trusted is the updated definition of credibility. And since I talked about the, the particular areas of the being known and being trustworthy, I'll give you the two, the, the two skill sets associated with uh, likability. Uh, one is, is uh, share the stage, or is a, one of the terms that came out of the interviews is cred dust. Cred dust is that magic that happens when you share somebody else's ideas, thoughts, or actions. Oh, I love it. And so that. you want to be able to share your ideas, share your thoughts. The second is to essentially show respect by showing up when you show up. And that often means coming early, come, coming prepared, and coming with your heart. And so to be – I actually have an opportunity. If you want to be likable in business – essentially share cred dust and show respect for those you interact with. Kind of simple. I believe, you and I talked about this earlier, I believe that one of the biggest tectonic shifts that's transforming the business landscape today is, is credibility marketing. Do you agree that there has been a shift from, it's, it seems like 25 years ago, businesses would buy all the ads they could afford and then use those to tell the world how awesome they are. And it seems like that type of advertising has radically reduced in effectiveness. And it seems like the businesses that are doing it well today are finding much more credible ways to, to advertise. Um, do you agree that there, there has been a change in the need for credible advertising? And, and if so, why do you feel that has happened? So first, I'm going, to, I'm going to say the question you originally asked was, what is the tectonic shift happening in the world? And I'm going to say credibility. Okay. Not necessarily just credibility marketing. Now, to answer your specific question, and the reason for credibility is, once again, we have a choice. As a human species, we, are, we have a choice of whether we survive or we just run ourselves into extinction. And the... The solution to surviving, the solution to bring back our humanity and be more humane with each other is to be credible. And so if you say, let's market credibly or credibility marketing, then the answer is you can't just market credibly. The company has to be credible. 
you can't say one thing. This is wh- when we came back to as an individual. You can't be credible externally until you're credible internally. So if the company does not have credible practices, there's a choice. It's time to reinvent the company or disappear. Because let's be clear, if you don't, you will disappear. And so the the importance of marketing and spending money on awareness first could be in your marketplace, interview 500 customers and see what you should be focusing on. Once you figure out what you should focus on, figure out one of the things that bothered me most. So I went to, I went to B-School and I read all about customer service and how important customer service was. And then I went to work for companies and none of the companies spent any money on customer service. As a matter of fact, their goal, although they didn't say it publicly, was the opposite of all the stuff they said publicly. Because the people who had the less budgets, the people who were the, the lowest ranking people in the organization were focused on customer service. In SaaS-based businesses, this is no longer something that's possible. When the cost of switching is you snap your fingers as a new app, what that means is you need to be credible both inside and outside your company to be successful. And so to answer your question is absolutely yes, but it's not just about marketing. It's about the company itself permeating credibility. So two weeks ago, I attended a four-day conference. And from the four days with some of the best marketing minds, there were two concepts that resonated with me so much that I ended up creating a show for each of those those concepts. As you did these 500 episodes, was there one or two things that just resonated with you the most? Well, first, I'm going to say almost everything. I mean, it was really crazy. Um, servant leadership. I mean, all the 10 elements, servant, serv- servant leadership was powerful. Coachability was powerful. There were I've done a lot of, um, I have a YouTube channel where I answer, it, it, it's under Credibility Nation. Uh, it's called Dear Credibility Expert, sort of like the Dear Abby. And I answer as many credibility questions as I can in 10 minutes once a week. And so I cover things like, do you need a PhD to be credible? Do you, uh, do you get credibility based on authority um, being assigned it or by practice, right? There's lots of those. It's really interesting to me what, what, what I might consider thinking about is what, ultimately happened, I have 470 video testimonials and they all go something like this. Mitchell, I've been looking for clarity for the last two, four, 10 or 12 years and you gave it to me in five minutes. Thank you. So when you hear that and you start hearing that, there was a period of time where I let the dubious lesson of ego pop in. Man, I'm really good. I I have a superpower of clarity. And, And yes, I do. And what I want to say is when I realized that what I was able to do is teachable, and I actually now have a course inside Credibility Nation, what's bundled in is a half hour course on how to get clarity on your purpose and your passion in a half hour. So what I realized, if you could teach it, that means we've been taught wrong. So when I realized that the definition of credibility was wrong, when I realized that we've been doing things like spreading cred dust. They're new words. Oh, I'll give you one more. Uh, cred crud. We'll come back to that. Cred crud's really fun. The and and so what's interesting is the recognition we've been taught wrong that we should be taught easier, that we should be able to articulate when somebody asks you what you do, you should be able to to share your C pop because the C pop creates a container. And the container allows people to jump in or jump out, whether or not it's relevant for them or somebody in their network. Whereas a lot of times the, the thing that we think about that 30 second elevator pitch, what we think about is we start with I or we. And when you start with I or we, there's a part of the world who thinks about you being a salesperson. And as a salesperson, they start turning off. They block. They have the salesperson blockers or the ad blockers, right? And so what's nice about a CPOP is the opportunity to create a container. And so the way it happens, somebody says to me, hey, Mitchell, what do you do? Now, the problem with the CPOP is it starts mid-sentence. It starts with who you serve, businesses that feel invisible. So what you can do is you can create a compound sentence. So if you say, hey, Mitchell, what do you do? I say, well, the types of clients that are attracted to me, and I cause it, then I like, wait a second, and I go, businesses that feel invisible. And if that's of interest to you 
or interest of somebody in your network, you're going to then say, tell me more. And after that, you, then you can give your, 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 uh, your 30 second elevator pitch or one minute elevator pitch. Uh, but I'll give you the one word, cred crud. Okay. Tell me what that means. Cred crud is really fascinating. It's the types of things that you do that hurt your credibility that doesn't necessarily put you out of the equation, but you start adding those things together. You start having more and more cred crud in how you show up. You will ultimately put yourself out of business. And so what I'm referring to are things like if I look at a publisher's website in particular and the copyright at the bottom of their website isn't done properly, I'm like, well, how are they going to treat my book if they can't treat their own website properly? Or when I look at other people and they have an outdated copyright uh, signature, or if you look at a LinkedIn profile and it's yuckily done, or they don't have the right number of endorsements that they've given or received, or they have a picture that is 10 years or more older. Right. Those are things which are cred cred. It doesn't hurt you immediately. Think of it as going to the dentist. If you have a little bit of plaque, you're not guaranteed cavities. But the more plaque you add, the more cavities. So the more cred crud, because when people, if you recommended me tomorrow, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to Google my name. They're going to go see and how I show up asynchronously. And if I have a lot of cred crud and how I show up asynchronously, they're going to go, ah, I'm not going to follow through. Yeah, that's right. Because what you are doing is not in alignment with what you're saying. There, there is a incongruity there. I, I love how you, how, you, how you summarized it together. So the answer is yes. You need to be you. And the person that is you is the same person, whether or not you're with your family, with friends, you're with clients, whether they're close clients or, or just, you know, you have a SaaS-based product and there's somebody who pays you a teeny amount. You're still the same with them. You need to be that person who is delivering value, who is credible, who's always that same person. And I'll give you one last thing, which was which was fascinating. The interviews forced me to come up with 10 skills. It just felt like the right thing. And at the time I published the book and did the, the TEDx, I had the word integrity twice. So I have integrity under the pillar of being known. It's having in the integrity for yourself. And, and I have integrity under trustworthy. And the truth is, until about 11 months later, I didn't know why it was there twice. I just knew it needed to be there. And, and I was speaking to a woman who her focus is joy. And she said something. And I woke up the next morning and I go, I got it. I know why it's there twice. So under the, the pillar of being known, it's your internal integrity. It's how you treat yourself. If you're on a diet, do you actually cheat on your diet? Uh, for those people who cheat on their spouse, do you cheat on your spouse, right? It's just, it's the internal integrity. Under trustworthy, it's your external integrity. And I know the word integrity is only about one thing, but if you really think about it, think about silly politicians who are really good in all of their external records of everything they do, but then they, they cheat on their spouse or do something really silly and they feel that's internal and not external integrity and they get in trouble. And so you start thinking about the world integrity from those components. It will also significantly affect what you do from a credibility marketing perspective. Thank you so much, Mitchell, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. To learn more about or connect with Mitchell, you can find him on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. You can find his book, Credibility Nation, on Amazon, and you can check out his website at credibilitynation.com. And you can find links to each of those sites in the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. You can also get a free ebook that I wrote about passion marketing and learn how to become a top priority for your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. You can also subscribe to Monetization Nation on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook group, and on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I wish you success in your credibility marketing. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.